Okay, we are live and um, today's May 30th, which means we are on day 30 of the mouth breathing awareness campaign and it's almost coming to an end. I can't believe it. Um, I've got Alicia here for one more interview and then we have the last interview tomorrow. But what I've been doing all month is putting together all of these amazing people and getting them to share their stories. So I have access to tons of MyoMentor graduates who've gone through my program. They're all dentists and hygienists and I get to hear their stories, but my thought was to help spread the awareness around mouth breathing and myofunctional symptoms. If I can share their stories, then my goal is that more patients will get treatment, more professionals will potentially hear this, relate to it, and maybe be able to help their patients in turn or themselves. So um, I've got Alicia Jansons here today. She is a hygienist and um, soon to be myofunctional therapist. She's just finishing up my Mile Mentor program, and I'm really happy that you are brave enough to share your story, even though you're like, I'm barely getting started. <laughs> um, so you're in um, kind of the Orange County, LA County, like right on that border in Norwalk, uh, and that's where you're going to be hopefully doing some collaboration with the Breathe Institute, which is super exciting. Um, so why don't you introduce yourself, um, whatever I didn't get to, and then sure. um, let's, let's hear the story that you want to share for mouth breathing awareness. It sounds good. Yeah, like Sarah said, I've been in hygiene for, let's see, since 2011. So it's, I've, I've been primarily in clinical practice, private practice. I've had a lot of public health work under my resume now, but mm. it's, it was interesting to me to, I felt like as a hygienist, I really tried to stay up on all of these, like the most current research and literature and I think the eye-opening thing taking your course was like you do not realize what you don't know like I felt like I in hygiene I feel like I tried to stay as as up with everything as I could but then you have those patients where you just hit a wall with like you can't get anywhere with them and it's funny because right before I started the course we had this younger patient in and she just is had every symptom of myo and doctor and I, we can't figure any solution out. And as I'm taking the course, I'm thinking of her like, I have to call her. As soon as this uh, closure of office is done, we're going. <laughs> I'm calling her up. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I have some answers, finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But even just for myself, it's it was shocking. I Just doing the therapies and, and kind of seeing the change in myself, changing from mouth breathing 100% of the time to really learning nasal, nasal breathing and trying to learn with Patrick McEwen's videos and <laughs> kind of um, getting into the Buteco as much as I can. It's, it's Good. been interesting. Good. So what were some of the symptoms that you had? Like, I mean, have you connected anything to childhood or what did you notice like throughout the program or maybe even before? Um, like what were your initial symptoms and, and um, where did you start and where are you now? Yeah, well, knowing what I know now, I mean, childhood, same thing. I was bottle fed, so I never, you know, had that um, going. But I did start ortho probably in junior high. I had a lot of crowding. Um, and shortly after I was done with ortho, I, they didn't do any expansion or anything like that. It was just alignment. Mm -hmm. um, shortly after that, I had to do a... a sleep study and they did tell me I had mild sleep apnea is what they when did. You were in junior high? Uh, that was probably early high school. Wow. So yeah. what, I mean, were you tired or what made them? Tired. Fatigue, oh, chronic okay. fatigue. I've been like that since I could remember. Just, I mean, I never felt rested and they, they were going, sending me from referral to referral kind of Wow. doing all these blood tests and you know trying to figure out is it mono is it this is it that what is it and so that's why they finally sent me for a sleep study and i slept at that at that time you were doing the in-person studies more than the cool stuff they have now so where you had yeah. to do all the little things to your head and <laughs> and all that and then you lay in the bed there and you see the light and camera right above your face so it's hard to fall asleep in those. <laughs> i know 
I mean, gosh, there's always flaws in those things, but did it come back and um, have any results for you? Yeah, they said mild. I mean, they didn't recommend a CPAP at that time and they had a hard time. I did have a hard time sleeping. So they're like, well, eventually we'll do another one, but we're not that concerned. How many years ago would that have been? Like what, um, what let's year? Let's see. That probably, well, it was around when I was maybe 15 or 16 and I'm 34 now. So maybe just under 20 years. Right yeah, now. I bet um, you probably were in that UARS category where I think so. you, know, you would have not triggered very high on a traditional sleep study. And now we know so much more that most people who are younger um, have so much more going on than like just the standard apnea and hypopneas, right? Yes. So gosh, yeah. it makes me wonder like, if, if you knew back then and it would have triggered higher then I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. it's interesting, right? It's, it's, it's amazing. true. Yeah. So after that, then they sent me to an ENT to check for like polyps and deviated septum, all those kind of things. And when I, I forgot to mention too, with ortho, they did want to do, I think it's the MMA surgery. I, I didn't know what that was then, but I'm thinking back now. So mm. they were wanting to create more space in and um, cut out a portion of the tongue and move the jaw. And I'm really, really so like glad then, I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, me too. So they were thinking your tongue is too big for your mouth. This yes. is the problem. We need to cut the tongue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, geez. But I remember having headgear to get started. So I do know that they moved things back. Luckily, they didn't take out the bicuspids, but okay. I know we did shift backwards. And see, when I look at pictures from childhood, I have usually had my mouth closed. I don't think it started there. I think it started with ortho. I really do. Interesting. That's my, my gut feeling. Do you think you have any degree of tongue tie or tongue restriction? I am debating on that. I think I do because I am able to do a lot of the exercises now through going through these couple weeks of, you know, trying it out on myself. <laughs> that. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely still a very um, cognitive thing. I, if I'm not thinking about it, then my mouth is open and I'll start mouth breathing. And, yeah. So. It makes me think, um, you know, if you have any degree of tongue tie, that can often be the, the kind of the root thing that starts it all. Um, but you wouldn't have probably noticed until they started the retractive orthodontics. And now it's like, oh, your tongue is too much, too big. And yeah. so that might be why it seems like it all started then. It might have just been yeah. now you had less room for the tongue. Um, but I don't know. I mean, that's all just theory. It and seems guessing. right on. Yeah, your I haven't even looked at your tongue, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It seems right on of what you're saying. That's kind of what I think happened too. Yeah. Interesting. So, okay. So you had the ortho, um, yeah. as you got older, I mean, did the fatigue just kind of stay? I mean, was that just like your normal? That's my normal. Yeah. And yeah. it's funny too, because now I've started doing mouth taping with the myotape. Um, Good. and it's, it is a difference for sure. It, oh it yeah. I, I noticed it too. Um, I, once I started taping my mouth every night, I was like, I didn't realize I was actually tired before. Like it, it didn't, until I had something to compare it to, I didn't realize. And, and so um, I think most people who start nasal breathing consistently through the night feel better. So, yeah. um, and they feel like they sleep better. They feel more well-rested. So you, mm -hmm. you do feel that? I feel that a lot. And I had previously, like, I, I never recall dreaming. And so now I do. So I think it is kind of allowing me to get into that deeper stages of sleep. That it's For sure. This is actually one of the questions um, that Dr. Zaghi asks patients and a lot of the, the doctors who are getting into more of the sleep stuff is, do you dream? Do you remember your dreams? Because that can be a good indicator as to whether or not people are actually getting to stage three and stage four sleep. So I'm super glad you mentioned that. You're the first person to yeah. start dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of do my own investigating as I go. And then I learn these facts and say, oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So um, you started mouth taping, you started myofunctional therapy. Um, yeah. What else is on your radar? I, you know, I'm really interested in the field because what drew me to it is really that ability to help people heal themselves. I think that's was the, the deepest message that I heard when we started um, watching videos of Dr. Zoggy and Patrick McEwen is just how many people get to that desperate rope of like, I don't know what to do anymore. And they get 
they get in that loop of provider to provider to provider and we just keep referring and we don't know yeah. what to do with them. And I just think that I, you know, had fallen into that loop so young in my life that I really have that appreciation for that. And for I think sure. that Mayo is just, it's so involved in so many different um, areas of study that there's so many providers that would benefit from knowing. Oh, the for option. sure. Yeah, so it, that's really, what it kind of falls between the cracks of so many fields that it doesn't, you know, belong to anyone. And so I think it's really easy to, to get missed. But there's so many fields like physical therapy, speech therapy, dentistry, sleep medicine, um, and beyond that if all those practitioners had an understanding of this stuff, it would make their treatments more effective and better and their patients would be happier. And so it's, it's huge. It's a really big deal. Yeah. I, well, I think anytime you can avoid surgical option, the patient is always going to want to go that route. So yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm interested in, in, you know, since you have such a public health background and I remember saying to the, saying this to you on, on the phone, like months ago, um, I'd love to, to figure out a way to make this treatment more accessible to more yes. people, because right now, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it can be a fairly expensive treatment. You know, I think 100 to $200 per session, depending on where you live. And, you know, it's not typically covered by insurance. So I don't know if you can use your, your big brain to figure that out, I but <laughs> I hope to do that because working in public health has always been really close to my heart, but just being with patients and they're so thankful for any help that you can give them. It's, it's a very different world than private practice. I, I love the aspect of private practice in the sense that you really get to know people. You have the time to learn about their kids and their families and you see generation after generation. But with public health, you don't really have that reputation with them. It's usually get them out of pain and then you don't really see them anymore. But the sincerity and the thankfulness that they can get this help that they've been waiting on for sometimes years. It's, yeah. it would be really neat to get Mayo involved because of the ability to do things like this, like the video chatting, you would not need a whole lot of uh, space to do something like that. Yeah, or I guess funding as well, depending on where that's coming from, so. Yeah, it, it will be interesting to see. I think the challenge is gonna be ahead of us in the sense of, you may not have much grant funding in, in a thing that nobody knows about just yet, you know? So yes. you have to find the right niche for that. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the more we're working on putting research out there, like what they're doing through the Breathe Institute, yes. I think if we can get research and then we can show that, wow, if you actually can treat this stuff early, you can prevent all these bigger issues later. I think, yes, I think that could help. Is my it's definitely yeah. the key. And I think as you, it would be very interesting to see the research come out more so to the public is what I would like to see of that kind of understanding where it's like they look into it and reach out on their own. Yeah. That's when I think you'll see a pivotal mo moment in the field. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't have any background in that, but um, I know that you do. So I think, yeah, that's, that's very cool. Um, well, this has been great. Is there anything else you want to share about your story? Um, it's still my journey. I'm still going. <laughs> so yeah, you're as I continue with the therapy, I, I'm going to see where that journey leads, whether I do end up doing tongue tie surgery or not. I'm still deciding on that. So, well, I, I hope things know. just continue to get better and better. I hope, I mean, I'm happy to hear that you're sleeping better. You're dreaming. Um, I'm hoping your fatigue is better. Um, yeah. daytime. I, think, I think what a lot of my symptoms that I worry about now is I get a lot of tension up in the shoulders and in my chest. And I've kind of ruled out that it's not just hygiene life since we've been off for these last 10 weeks. <laughs> yes. So, so there you can start to think, well, maybe that is re related to the, the fascia restrictions of potentially having a tongue tie. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think I'm going to end up down that journey, which if it, if it is the way it is, it's kind of nice to have that appreciation of what your patients are going through. I think it totally. makes you a better clinician when you, you've been through these things, but... <laughs> Not that Not anybody really wants it. Thing. Yeah, exactly. The <laughs> surgery is surgery, but. <laughs> yeah, no, well, this is great. I, I'm so excited to get to hear your progress and to see how far you get uh, because you're just at the very beginning of your journey. So it's yeah. kind of exciting to see like where you'll be in three, four, five, ten 10 years. I mean, who knows? I think 
a lot of this stuff, it's not just transformative to our patients and to our like right. professional career lives. It's transformative yeah. to our own health and like our own wellness and well being. you know, like things you just didn't know yeah. about your body and your breathing and your sleep now are coming to light. And it's amazing. And I love that connection that it brings in the sense that you're tying together speech language pathologists with your chiropractors, with your ENTs, with your hygienists and dental teams and surgeons and orthodontists. It's like any time that you can really take dentistry and add it to medicine, I think the patients always benefit. Yeah. We've been too isolated for too long, I think, in the dental field where we need to, we need that collaboration. Our patients are a whole being, you know? So I think any oh, provider that really understands that will always benefit their patients more for sure. Oh, for sure. Yes. You're speaking my language. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been really big with oral systemic connections. So awesome. I'm just now touching on the airway side of it, but it's I know, always now it's like a whole new uh, world opening up, right? Like, oh, wow. and you can't just touch on the tip of it. You have to go down that hole <laughs> completely because <laughs> it's so fascinating, you know, where totally. it's like you want to know more and then you need to know more and more and more. So yeah, I like no, that. I love it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing um, not just your, your health kind of patient story, but also your professional journey. I think it's, it's, um, they're one and the same for so many of us. So it's really important to share. So yeah. All right. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing this. I guess I'll let you get on with your weekend. Sure. Um, and yeah, have a great night. And thanks again for, um, for sharing your story with everyone. Yeah, it was fun. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.